Hey, Alex again. Sorry about the dark, grainy video. I'm having a terrible eyeball allergy day. And these lights were killing me. So since I do half my talking with my hands, you're going to see little shadow puppets on my face. So sorry about that. Anyway, I'm waiting for some code I'm working with to be uploaded to GitHub. So I have a little bit of time to make a video. I decided to toss this video up real quick because I got a question from somebody who was having a lot of trouble with audible wine in spread cycle mode with ANET A8 steppers. And I did put up a video that addresses that, but I'll recap that stuff real quickly in case this is the only video you're gonna be watching. So if you're a regular viewer, you know how I get into the nerdy nuts and bolts of things. But here's a TLDR if you're just looking for something to try. And this is basically what this all boils down to. Go into your configuration advanced heading in Marlin. Enable TMC advanced in your Trinamic section for the, the 2208s and the 2130s. And then try lowering the T off values with the code that's going to be at the top of this video description. You just paste it in there and format it. Okay. So for the people that didn't see the other video, I'm now going to summarize that a little bit and then go into all the background of what the uh, code that you're pasting in there is actually going to do. Depending on your stepper, you may need more headroom, more voltage headroom. So if there's a lot of voltage drop across the coil and you're using a low voltage, like 12 volts, you may have problems because you're not going to be able to uh, let the pulse wave modulator operate efficiently and it's going to drop the frequency down into a range that you can hear. That's the whine. And if your motor has a high inductance, it's going to set up a slower time constant. That can also force the timer down into the audible range. Also, current settings. Now, these trinamic drivers are happiest under one amp if you try to go over that with some of the drivers they get a little goofy so keep it as low as possible to still get the torque that you need but not so low that you're starving your motors because then you can also get the wine which is unfortunate now Prusa, with their next iteration of their printer, the Mark III, they addressed some of those problems since they're using the, the TMC2130 chips for just about everything. And they changed the stepper motors that they used, they changed the currents that they run them at, and they changed their operating voltage. Now, if you poke around on the forums enough, you'll see that they say Trinamic, Trinamic uh, 2130 seem to be happiest around 28 volts. I think the Mark III's are running a little bit over 24 but it seems to be okay in most situations. Down around 12, you're definitely asking for problems. And if Prusa's team couldn't solve it at 12, the average Joe probably isn't going to either. They also switched to drivers that take less current. So they're using one amp peak current drivers that'll generate enough torque at their typical operating levels and speeds that they don't have to pump a whole lot of current through it. And if you look in the Prusa firmware, the defaults for those drivers are they start at about 450 milliamps and then they go up to like 750 milliamps and they never get anywhere near the one amp mark that's like kind of the, the danger zone for goofiness. And that's good because those drivers will run nice and cool and that eliminates one of the variables for step or wine in uh, spread cycle. Same with raising the operating voltage. Now they managed to get away with this using uh, stepper drivers that have what I would consider to be a kind of high inductance and I, I wouldn't use them because I like to run uh, faster prints. But usually Prusa guys are printing around like you know 60 millimeters a second, 40 millimeters a second, maybe up to like 70 or 80 and then travel speeds a bit higher. So they're not printing like 250 millimeters a second or anything like that. So those steppers are fine for them. And then they have gone and changed the Marlin firmware defaults that they used to base their firmware off of to values that will keep that wine out of the audible hearing range using their setup. So that makes a good starting point for what you want to look at if you're having these problems. In my opinion, the stock Marlin value for some of these settings is a little bit high. They work fine for me and they work fine for many people, but... Um, I have like six different models of steppers around here and I've plugged them all in and tried to get wine out of them and I can't, but I buy decent steppers w with low inductance so that I can uh, run them quickly if I need to. I don't have any really high inductance motors to test out. I don't have any real high, you know, voltage drop motors that I could test out. Uh, but that's why I don't have those problems. A lot of people using these printers, I'm, I think, I think Marlin should change the values a little bit to kick up the pulse wave modulation a little bit higher so it doesn't drop down to like you know 11 kilohertz or 8 kilohertz or whatever where people can hear it whining across the room so anyway um 
Last video, I briefly said, hey, you can use the Trinamic Advanced features to change all of the variables that affect the chopper frequency. Now I'm going to show you how to do it because it's pretty easy to mess around with. You're not really going to hurt anything. Just you can reset them to their stock values if you want or just delete the code that you put down and it'll default to the regular settings. And I, I did all this because the, the person that asked the question was at the point where they were like, I'm just gonna buy new stepper motors. And that, that's a pretty big investment, you know, bet between like m maybe eight and 15 bucks an axis. And it, it might be unnecessary. And you could get steppers that also don't work and then you would still have to go do the software stuff. So you might as well do the software stuff first and save yourself a couple bucks. So let me show you how to do it. So just about all the stuff we need to access is gonna be in your for the configuration advanced header file. So just open that up in your editor of choice. And let's first make sure we're set up for the 2130s. So just do a find for 2130. And that should bring you down to the 2130 uh, 2208 section. So if you have one of these chips, this is going to be on. You will want to turn that on. And then you define which axis you have them on. So if we say define X is TMC 2130, I'll do it for the Y too, just for kicks and giggles. You know your stepper driver settings right here. So this is where you're gonna set your current, your micro stepping and your interpolation. So this will either be true or false. Obviously that's a binary statement. The current is going to be your RMS current in milliamps. So let's say If you want to uh, convert between RMS and peak, we can round off to 1.4 for uh, peak, and then it's the negative or the uh, reciprocal of that for RMS. And you usually run your stepper motors between like 50 and 80 or 85% or so of your maximum current uh, for the sake of cooling. It depends on your steppers. You can obviously run them higher, but let's look at like um, the values that Prusa uses for their new setup. They switch to lower current steppers because of the fact that the trinamic drivers run hot. So they wanted to be able to get sufficient torque at lower current. So they switched to one amp steppers. And first thing you would do is take your current, so let's say one amp, and then you're gonna multiply that by your percentage as a decimal of what you want it to run at. So let's say we want it to run at like 80%. Oops. So one divided by, uh, sorry, one times 0.8, obviously it's gonna be 0.8. And then that's going to be your peak current as a target. So you're gonna multiply that by uh, 0.70712 blah, 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 in order to get your RMS. So we're talking about like 565, 66 milliamps. So anything around there, you could just start at like 500 or something like that just to be on the, running on the, the cooler side. So we'll just say around, we'll set those a 500 milliamps RMS. And then your micro stepping, just set it whatever you want. Uh, mine's at four, but most people use 16. And make sure that what, whatever you have here matches your millimeters per second in your uh, regular configuration file under steps per millimeter and we can leave interpolation on. Now, if you're, you're, we're talking about spread cycle here, so I mean, we can disable stealth chop if you want. And that means we're going to disable hybrid threshold since we're not gonna be switching back and forth between spread cycle and stealth. Now this, I turn all of this on when I'm troubleshooting. Normally this will look like this, where it's commented out with the two slashes and it's green text. So if you have that, set up that's going to let you uh, uh, poll and reset your um, over under temperature conditions and that was important to me because I was having some errors when I first set up the 2130s where it was reporting over temperature even though the, the drivers were cool and I wanted to be able to reset that flag and you see at the bottom here, it says the 122, the M122, where it reports your uh, driver conditions. You need to have TMC debug enabled. And that's just if you keep scrolling down here. If you're using sensorless homing, you can do that. I don't use it. Now here's the TMC debug. So normally, of course, this is going to look like that. Decomment it, and that's going to let you send that very useful M122 command to see what all your settings are. 
Now the very last part of the section is define TMC advanced, right? So normally that's going to be commented out. We want it to look like this. And then these brackets are where you're going to put all of your information. And after every line, you have to put a slash. So you, we're going to have a slash after the first one. Hit enter, enter your second line, third line, whatever. So if we want to do our T off time for our X and our Y, that's what it's going to look like. Now you can set this number right here. Like I said, naturally Marlin's going to be set at five. That's in another file. It's in the, um, what file is that? Uh, stepper something dumb. All right. I dug up that Marlin file that has the, uh, the default trinamic set. So if we search for T off, we can see that uh, their default time is five. The blank time is 24. You could probably leave that there. Um, and this is what we're going to be dropping down to three. But we're going to do that in the advanced files. You can also do that here, and that's just fine. But I'll just leave it stock at three so I don't forget to change it. And then if this doesn't work, you can also mess around with your hysteresis start and end values. This you could raise as high as five, and this you could drop as low as uh, one. And probably be okay but again I'm just gonna leave those stock and we'll deal with the just the tee off for now and as I mentioned in the other video Marlin has an entire troubleshooting guide for uh, tuning in the steppers and getting rid of the noise so you might want to check that out this is where you can find it They also give instructions for blank time and hysteresis and all that good stuff. And I just realized I'm in the 2208 section, but it should actually be the same for the 2300s. Yup. Yeah, it's all right down here. Wait, what? Marlin, you're wrong. Marlin, you have a typo. That should read only enables if Jiber is used with spread cycle because right here Trinamic says so but anyway uh, let's get back to our configuration advanced header file but there's there's an entire range of these that you can set it to and you can see them all in the Trinamic data sheet but I'd, I wouldn't go any lower than one and I wouldn't go any higher than obviously five if it's not working because that's what it is. So I say usually three is a good guess because you have to recompile your firmware and upload it every time you try this. So you might as well just like shoot in the middle. If that's fine, good, leave it. Or you can take it up to four and see if there's a problem. If that's no good, take it back down to three. Or if you're still having wine at three, you can take it down to two or maybe even one but I really wouldn't go any lower than two with the rest of the settings we have uh, in Marlin for the Trinamics chips. So yeah, start at three, go to two if you want to. And what that's going to do is um, it changes the, well, off time of the signal that goes to the steppers. And depending on what, um, how fast or slow your off time uh, is, or I should say it's how long or short your off, off time is, that's going to set your, your PWM at a particular frequency. So if your off time is too high, i.e. too slow, you're going to get a lower frequency for that PWM, and it'll drop start to drop down into the audible frequency range. Now, people with particularly misbehavy steppers with the standard value of 5 have reported wine all the way down to 8 kilohertz, which is quite noticeable and extremely annoying. Now, the tee-off time of 5 should, with the rest of the setup and, uh, and uh, steppers that are known to work well, that should be 17 kilohertz, which is right at the top of uh, human hearing range for the average adult but your misbehavy steppers might drop that down a couple notches. So if that drops it down from 17 to like 15 to 11 to 8, you're probably going to be able to hear 8. You're probably going to be able to hear 11. You may, might be able to hear 15. But regardless, if we take that down to 4, then that's going to up our frequency from 17 kilohertz to around 21 kilohertz, 
which is what uh, Team Alot, one of the Marlin team, recommends trying at first. But I, I say just go down to three if you're having audible nastiness. And then if we take that down to three, it's going to take it up from 24 kilohertz to, or uh, I'm sorry, 21 kilohertz to 24 kilohertz or 27 kilohertz. It, it depends. So the lower that goes, the higher your frequency. So then if your stepper is misbehaving and because of inductance and uh, other factors, you're starting to drop that frequency down at the audible hearing range, you're going to buy yourself a little bit more frequency headroom. And of course, then you have to recompile your firmware and send it to your printer. So there you go. That's just another quickie supplement. If this was helpful to you, as always, I have my support links in the description of the video. So if this help, so if this tip helped out and you didn't have to spend 50 bucks on a new set of stepper drivers and you're appreciative, kick me a couple bucks. And for the sake of the community, if you find settings with your particular stepper that work using the advanced options, go ahead and post those underneath too, because it'll give people with similar steppers a starting point. That's how end users can help out with the uh, open source community, even if you don't do any codeware or hardware hacking or anything like that. So thanks for watching. I'll get some new videos out soon. And until then, get out there and make something awesome.